In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, today is is St. Lucy Day, which, though it may not have much notoriety here in the United States, it's widely celebrated in many other parts of the world, especially in the Scandinavian countries. Um, The day is traditionally observed in homes by having a young daughter of the house dress in a white robe with a red sash and a crown of lighted candles uh, going room from room to room, singing uh, early in the morning while it's still dark and waking everyone up with what are called St. Lucy cakes and coffee. So that's the tradition. And now I can imagine this, this young girl with a, with a lighted crown of candles and a parent going, by, going along behind her with a fire extinguisher because it just sounds... <laughs> but... This tradition stems from early stories of of Lucy, whose name means light, um, of her going into the catacombs uh, with candles to light the way for the persecuted Christians as they secretly worshipped. Because she lived during the time of of the Diocletian persecution, when Christians were were, uh, really having to secretly worship underground, and it was very dangerous for them. But... That said, in actuality, we know really very little about Lucy, um, except for the fact that her name appears in the earliest list of Christian martyrs, and that she lived in Sicily, um, in a province called Syracuse, uh, and she died around the year 304. So it wasn't until much later, around the 6th century, that... um, Details of her story begin to be filled in uh, uh, within the various histories of the martyrs. And according to these accounts, Lucy was born into uh, a wealthy family, noble parents, uh, in the year 283. Her father was Roman, but he died when she was only five years old, just leaving her mother alone to raise her. And the mother was Greek, but... Like many of the other early martyrs, uh, women uh, particularly, Lucy had consecrated her virginity to God. And she she did that because she wanted to distribute her dowry to the poor. So she didn't want to be married. She thought this money should go to the poor as part of my expression of faith. But her mother knew nothing of this. She didn't know that. And so she promised her in marriage to a young man who happened to be a pagan, but he was also from a wealthy family. And Lucy's mother was suffering from an illness herself, and so she was very worried about Lucy's future, and she thought this is a way to ensure that she's going to to be safe and and, and live a a good life by having her married off. So so she didn't necessarily pay any attention, even if she had known that Lucy had consecrated her virginity in this way. So when Lucy... Uh, heard of this, she was greatly distraught, but she was even more distraught because her mother was so sick, and she feared for her life. And there was a shrine to another saint, another martyr, who had died some 50 years previous to that, named Agatha. And this shrine was um, in a neighboring province, about 50, 60 miles away, something like that. But they traveled together there, uh, because this was known as a place of miracles and healing. So Lucy and her mother go there, And while they're there, Lucy is visited in a dream by Agatha, by St. Agatha, and told that her mother will be healed. And sure enough, her mother was healed. And so they go home, and Lucy took that opportunity then to persuade her mother to to give part of their riches, including her dowry, to the poor as, as an offering. Well... This didn't go down well with Lucy's betrothed. <laughs> he was quite upset, and um, he turned her into a, to the authorities for being Christian. And so at that time, that was essentially a death sentence. And Lucy went before the authorities, and she refused to renounce her faith, and so she was indeed sentenced to die. Now, there are various accounts of how that was to have happened, 
But the one most commonly told is that as she awaited her execution, she had a vision that the emperor Diocletian, who was carrying out this persecution of the Christians, that he would no longer reign or that his reign was going to come to an end fairly soon and that Christ would prevail in the end. And so she prophesied this. And of course, again, this didn't go down well. Um, and so the emperor, because she had this vision, he ordered, for her, he ordered that her eyes be gouged out. And so today, even, even today, we see Lucy portrayed in art, often as this, this young maiden holding a golden tray with two eyeballs on it. That's the, that's the common image we have of her. Now, as I said, these various stories all developed around Lucy and the, in the centuries that followed her martyrdom. Um, but what we know for sure, beyond any of these romantic legends, is that Lucy offered her witness to Christ and in steadfast obedience to her faith, she suffered what was most likely a horrible death. That's the one thing that is recorded. And what we must remember is that her witness is not just about the fact that she was a martyr, but also her actions, the embodied faith that so, that so offended the worldly authorities and really challenged common secular practices like giving, giving their, their estate to the poor um, and not wanting to be married. That was something that, that was not only completely countercultural, it sprung from her sense of discipleship, her faith. She saw in Christ a new way of being in the world, a way that called to her, Christ called to her. She saw in her discipleship a sense of obligation to the poor, and she sought to enact that, you know, against the expectations of her society. So in this she continues to light the way for Christians today who seek to discern the path to which Christ calls us. Now, it's no accident that the Feast of St. Lucy comes at this, the, the darkest time of the year. And indeed, in the earlier calendars, when her feast was first set, December 13th was considered the winter solstice, the longest night of the year. And so Lucy, again, her name meaning light, is a beacon in that darkest time of the year. Much like our Advent wreath back here, with its ever-increasing light against the darkness, culminating in the incarnation uh, that we celebrate as Christmas, Lucy lights the way for our, our journey. She's a beacon for us right now in this, the darkest time of the year as we approach Christmas. John's Gospel tells us the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. This light, the light of Christ, is the light to which Lucy's witness points us. So today, as we remember Lucy, may we pray that, that we, like her, may live in such a manner that we shine the light of Christ on the path before us and that we illumine the way for all those who seek to find and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen.